myself, Dr. Ajay Kumar, Assistant Professor, Kalgoja University, Greater Noida. Today we will discuss the topic flow of genetic informations or we can say central dogma in molecular biology. The objective of this topic. The objective is to understand the flow of the genetic informations in the biological system. Almost immediately after the structure of the DNA was elucidated by the Watson and the Crick, the mechanism by which genetic informations was maintained within a cell and used to create the protein. This mechanism has become known as the central dogma of the molecular biology. This central dogma has main three important parts. One is the replications, second is the transcriptions, and third one is the transmission. In replications, the genetic information is preserved and transmitted to the new cells, means the offsprings or the progeny, by the duplication process, which is generally called the replications. The replications generally is a part of the mitosis. Second important step is the transcriptions of the central dogma in which the genetic information is stored in the nucleus is made available to the rest of the cell by the creations of the numerous temporary copies and known as the messenger RNA by the process known as the transcriptions. mRNA is similar to the DNA in that it consists of a long very specific sequence of the nucleotide. It differs in that it is a single stranded, contains the sugar ribose rather than deoxyribose in its the backbone and utilize the base uracil in place of the thymine which is generally present in the DNA. Transcriptions is a major part of one of the most important aspects of the gene expressions and when it turning on the genes in appropriate cells at the appropriate times. It's a very important. And the third one step is the translations in the cytoplasm, the ribosomes constructs a specific proteins by interpreting the sequence of the bases in the mRNA. This process generally known as the translations or the protein synthesis. This is the diagram in which all the three important steps uh, that is the replications, transcriptions and translation has been shown. In the replication process you can see both the strands of the DNA take part and uh, one template strands is synthesized and uh, in the next second step the transcriptions only the one strands of the DNA uh, take part and uh, synthesize the RNA which is complementary. And third one is the step is the translation in which the transcription synthesis mRNA and uh, other RNA such as the ribosomal RNA and the transfer RNA take part in the process of the translations and synthesize the proteins with the help of the important protein factors and the enzyme. So these are the important three steps. Now the central dogma of the molecular biology, this is generally, we can say it's a explanations of the flow of genetic informations in a cell. It is often stated as the DNA makes the RNA <clears throat> and RNA makes the protein. Although this is not its a original meanings. And this concept was given by the Francis Crick in 1957 and after one year in 1958 this concept has been published in this picture you can see the synthesis from the dna to the rna by, uh, by the process of the transcriptions and then after the synthesis of the rna then by the process of the translation protein is synthesized the central dogma states that uh, once the information has passed into the protein it cannot get out again in more details, the transfer of the information from the nucleic acid to nucleic acids or from nucleic acid to the protein may be possible, but the transfer of the 
proteins uh, from protein to the proteins or from protein to the nucleic acid is not possible. The informations means here the precise determinations of the sequence either of the bases in the nucleic acids or the amino acid residues in the proteins. So we can say that the dogma it is a framework for understanding the transfer of the sequence informations which is present in the form of the nucleotides between the informations carrying the biopolymers biopolymers means the DNA RNA proteins in the most common general cases in the living organism and uh, uh, now you can see that there are the three major classes of these polymer uh, examples are the DNA RNA and the proteins and the DNA and RNA comprisingly called the nucleic acids the general transfers describe the normal flow of the biological informations the DNA can be copied by the process of the replications and make the DNA and DNA informations can be copied into the mRNA by the process of the transcriptions and the proteins can be synthesized by using the informations through the mRNA by the process of the translations the special transfer describes the RNA being copied from RNA and DNA being synthesized using an RNA template by the process of the reverse transcriptions and protein being synthesized directly from a DNA template without the use of mRNA. The unknown transfer describes a protein being copied from the synthesis of the RNA using the primary structures of the protein as a template part and the DNA synthesis using the primary structures of the protein as a template. The biopolymers that comprises the DNA, RNA and the polypeptides are the linear polymers means they are formed by linking the units of the monomers. The sequence of their monomers effectively encodes the informations. The transfer of the informations described by the central dogma and ideally are the faithful and deterministic transfer the informations. Wherein the one polymer sequence is used as a template for the constructions of another biopolymer with a sequence that is entirely dependent on the original biopolymer's sequence. Now the transfer of the genetic informations from the one generation to the next generations. This is the biological sequence informations flow and your DNA functions as a storage molecules and uh, hold the different genetic informations for the lifetime in a cell or in a cellular organisms. This is the picture in which you can see this is a strands of the DNA when it uh, separated and uh, from the template uh, separated strands act as a template strands and start to form the new strands or the progeny strands. In the sense that the DNA replications must occur if the genetic material is to be provided for the progeny of any cell, whether somatic or the reproductive. The cells may be the somatic or the reproductive. The copying from the DNA to DNA is the fundamental steps of the central dogma. The, a complex group of the protein called the replisomes perform the replication process and transfer the information from the parent to the offsprings or the daughter by the synthesis of our complementary strains. The replisomes which is comprises or form in the replications has uh, the following things. A helicase enzyme take part which unwinds the super helix as well as the double stranded DNA and create a fork that is called the replication fork. Apart from this, the different proteins known as the single strand binding protein, SSP protein, comes and binds to the open double stranded DNA so that it cannot bind again. Means we can say that it prevent its reassociating. The RNA primase that acts a complementary RNA primer to each template strands 
as a starting point for the replication. So these are the basic factors and the proteins which take part in the process of the replications and form the replisomes. Apart from this, the important enzyme is the DNA polymerase third. There are the three enzyme, DNA polymerase one, two, and the three, in which the third is the enzyme that reads the existing template chain from three prime to the five prime. That is the fixed uh, directions in which the this poly, polymerase enzyme reads the chain from three to five prime directions. And uh, when it reads uh, the directions or move on to the template strands, then it uh, adds the new complementary nucleotides from five to three prime ends of the daughter chain. Apart from this, the another enzyme that is the DNA ligase that joins the two Okajaki fragments. These are the very small fragments which are the formed on the another template strands of the DNA and known as the Okajaki segments on the um, basis of the discoverer. In Okajaki fragments, these are the joined together with the help of the phosphodiester bond which are the formed between the two nucleotides and it produce and it produce a continuous chain. <laughs> The phosphodiester linkages is formed between nucleotides in which the 3 prime hydroxy end of the one nucleotides and the 5 prime ends of the another nucleotide is joined by this phosphodiester linkage and it's uh, form a backbone of the double stranded DNA. This process typically takes place during the S phase of the cell cycle, means the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Next important second step is the transcriptions of the central dogma and the molecular biology in which you can see that the replication steps or strands uh, which is formed in the replication part synthesize a template strands which further go into the another steps known as the transcriptions and form the different types of the RNAs. Transcription, it is the process by which the information contained in a sections of the DNA is replicated in the form of a new assembled piece of the mRNAs, messenger RNAs. The enzymes facilitating the process include the RNA polymerase and the transcription factors. In the eukaryotic cells, the primary transcript is the pre-mRNA, whereas the pre-mRNA must be processed for the translation to the proceed. Means uh, when transcription process completed and uh, at the end of the transcriptions, the RNA is not the mature RNA, it known as the primary transcript or the pre yeah, immature mRNA, which is required the processed or the maturations so that the undesired part or the uncoded part can be separated from this RNAs and uh, this mRNAs can be um, effectively and actively take part in the later stages such as the translation process. The processing includes the additions of a 5' prime cap and a poly A tail to the pre-messenger RNA chain. And apart from this two process, means the five prime capping process and the poly A tail, one more process is the splicing, which is required for the maturations of the mRNA. So there are the three or the more than three processes occur in immature RNA, and it is required to make the immature RNA into the mature RNA. The alternative splicings are also occurs when the appropriate increasing the diversity of the proteins that any single mRNA can produce. Apart from this three process or the processing of the mRNA, one more process is the alternative splicings also occur and which is required to produce the different diversities, different um, properties and the qualities of the RNAs. The product of the entire transcription process means that it begin with the production of the pre-mRNA chain is a mature RNA chain. 
Now the third one or the last phases of the central dogma of molecular biology is the translations. The mature mRNA finds its way to a ribosomes where it get translated means uh, that is the place where the translation of the protein synthesis process occurs. In the prokaryotic cells which have no nuclear compartment the process of the transcriptions and the translations may be linked together without the clear separations because you know that in prokaryotic cells the nucleus is a present in a diffused form in the cytoplasm and there is a no separations and the segregations in the cytoplasm with the nucleus whereas in eukaryotic cells the site of the transcriptions means the cell nucleus is the transcription sites is usually separated from the site of the translation and uh, the site of the translation is the cytoplasm in case of the eukaryote because uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, in case of the eukaryotic well developed well defined and uh, separated nucleus is a present or generally known as the nucleus and separated by the nuclear membrane so the mrna must be transported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it can be bound by the ribosome so we can say that in case of the eukaryotic after the synthesis of the rna it is required that the mrna get separated or get to enter into the cytoplasm from the nucleus and then bind with the ribosomes and start the process of the protein synthesis the ribosome reads the mrna triplet codons which are the present on the mrna and usually beginning within the initiation codons or we can say that the initial codons uh, that is the AUG means uh, adenine, uracil and the guanine nucleotides are present in this triplet codon or also known as the initiator methionine codon and uh, these are the downstreams of the ribosomes binding sites means uh, they bind on that sites. The complexes of the initiation factors and the elongation factors bring the amino acyl acylate transfer RNAs and known as a transfer RNA into the ribosomes mRNA complex. The matching the codons in the mRNA to the anticodon part and this anticodon part is present on the transfer RNA. Each transfer RNA bears an appropriate amino acid residues and uh, add to the polypeptide chain which being to be synthesized on the ribosomes with the help of the mRNA. As the amino acid get linked into the growing peptide chain, the chain begins and folding into the correct conformations and the translations ends with the codon which may be the uh, terminations codon or the stop codons and generally these are the UA, UGA or the UAG triplet codons. So that's why we call it call these codons the stop codons or the termination codons because these are the responsible for the terminations of the process. The mRNA does not contain all the informations for specifying the nature of the mature proteins. The nascent polypeptide chain released from the ribosomes commonly requires the additional processing before the final product emerges. For one thing, the correct folding process is a very complex and vitally important to make the protein active and the functionals. For most proteins, it requires the other different proteins known as the chaperones to control the form of the product. Now, after these three important steps and the process of the central dogma, there are the some different special transfer of the biological sequence for informations are discovered by the different scientists. There are the three important process. One is the reverse transcription. Second is the RNA replications. And third one is the direct translations of the proteins or we can say the synthesis of the proteins directly from the DNA. In this direction, in the diagram or the figure, you can see that uh, in this case, first one is the reverse transcriptions in which uh, the DNA 
generally the process is that the DNA synthesizes the RNA, but in the process of the reverse transcription, the DNA can be synthesized from the RNA. And uh, second is the RNA dependent RNA polymerase in which the DNA can be synthesized by the process of the RNA dependent RNA polymerase with the help of a specific enzymes. And uh, sometimes in B2 conditions, the proteins can be directly synthesized from the DNA in the laboratory. But in this case, no cell is required. Now, the reverse transcriptions. Reverse transcription this is the transfer of the information from RNA to DNA. That's why we call it the reverse of the normal transcriptions process. This is known to occur in the case of retroviruses such as the HIV as well as in the eukaryotes in the case of the retrotransposons and the telomer synthesis. It is the process by which the genetic informations from the RNA gets transcribed and forms the new DNA. In this diagram you can see that generally the DNA form the DNA by the process of the replication but when the DNA is formed with the help uh, by the RNA and uh, with the help of a different enzyme known as the reverse transcriptase enzyme then this process is known as the reverse transcriptions. Second process that is the RNA replications or we can say RNA dependent RNA polymerase. In RNA replications it is the copying of the one RNA to the another means we can say that in this case one RNA is formed from the another RNA means DNA is not involved in the synthesis of the RNA. Generally such type of the processes or the enzymes are the present mainly in the viruses. The enzymes that copy RNA to the new RNA called the RNA dependent RNA polymerase and are also found in the many eukaryotes where they are involved in the RNA silencing. The RNA editing in which an RNA sequence is altered by a complex of the proteins and a guide RNA is also be seen or the present as RNA to RNA transfer. Now the third one step is the direct translations or we can say the synthesis of the protein directly from the DNA. Direct translations from DNA to protein has been demonstrated in a cell free system or we can say in the test tubes or the in vitro condition using the extracts of the E. coli, extracts from the E. coli which have the ribosomes but there is a no intact cells is the present in the test tubes. These cell fragments could synthesize the proteins from the single stranded DNA templates and isolated from the organisms and then the antibiotics also can be used to enhance the effect. However, it was the unclear whether this mechanism is a translation corresponding specifically to the genetic code or not.